going guys we're back in premiere pro today i had this as a request from someone on the color grading video that i put out yesterday and this is to do the sky replacement that we did in final cut but now we're going to do it in premiere pro it follows the very similar steps but i'm going to walk you through it today so we have the same clips if you guys have seen the final cut one it's going to be pretty much the exact same so this video might not be for you but for all the premiere pro users out there then definitely definitely check it out. So we have the same drone clip and then we're going to replace it with this cloud time lapse clip. Which will be pretty straightforward. So the first thing we want to do is I want to put the drone clip that we want to take the sky out of. We're going to put that in track number two in our video. So get some movement in here and we'll just do about 10 seconds of video for fun so put that all right we got like five seconds i'm going to keep the same settings so that's in track two and then for the time lapse let's take scrub around and I'll just take whatever. It's not the biggest deal. And what I want to do is I want to offset the transition a little bit. And we want to do this so that we get a more seamless, smooth transition. If you guys just don't want to transition, you just want to replace it, then these clips can start at the same time. But what I want to do is have a little bit of a transition. So I'll move this about a couple seconds in, and then we can stretch this out. A little bit just like that and then for this clip as well the cloud clip is a little bit slow so what we're going to do is we're going to retime it using the um, time remapper so hit r on your keyboard and you can drag the end and that will speed it up and we'll just bring it so it joins up with that clip just like so and then the next step that we want to do is put on a keying onto this top clip. So keying can be found in your effects. So I'm gonna switch my workspace into the effects. And if you go into video effects here, I'll close all this and show you, we can do video effects, keying, and then color key. We drag that color key onto the top. So now for the color key, you wanna choose your key color. And we can click on the eyedropper tool to select something in the clouds. The one thing I forgot to do too, is I'm doing, a, this is a 2.7K clip in a 1080p timeline. So I just need to change the scale to 75%. So for the key, key color, I want to select something in the clouds, not 100% white, something a little bit blue, so that when we increase the tolerance that we get the whole sky. So I'm going to do something in the clouds about like that. And then color tolerance, we drag that up until we don't see any sky left. So I think for this clip, about 100 should be good. And then we can add a little bit of a feather just to smooth out that clip. Usually around five should be good. So we get a nice smooth edge and we don't get uh, a lot of pixelation. So if we scrub through this clip, we can see, see how it's looking. That's looking pretty cool already. This time-lapse clip is a 4K clip, so we're gonna have to bring that down to about 50%, and I'm gonna do 60%. And then back working on the top clip, you can see there's a little bit of a white line that goes across the top of the clip, and that comes from the feather. So I'm gonna drop that down to two, maybe, maybe just a one. And that looks a lot better like that. 
So now, if you want this to transition in, it's already looking pretty good. Where we get a little bit of movement in the drone shot and then the time-lapse movement is matching sort of the flight movement. But now if you want to make it a smooth transition in, I'm going to make a cut on the top clip exactly where the time-lapse clip comes in underneath by doing Command K. And then if you hold Option and drag down, we're going to make a copy of this clip right before the time-lapse clip. And then for the bottom clip, we're going to delete the mask that we just put in. So now that we have the original clip without the sky replacement, and then that's going to switch to it with the sky replacement. And this is where you can be creative and you can add any transition that you want to add in the bottom track here. So if you go into video transitions, and I'm just going to do a dissolve for now, I'm going to do a dip to white. Just like so. So another good step to do is to match the color between your two different clips because you shot on two different cameras on two different days. Your color is going to be a little bit different. So as you can see, the drone clip is pretty green and yellow, very warm tones. And then the cloud clip is pretty cool and blue. So we're going to increase the warmth a little bit on the clouds, maybe increase the exposure a little bit, increase some contrast, and you just want to match them a little bit, a little bit better. And you can always add an adjustment layer over top of everything to create, um, to create a more uniform look. So that's looking pretty good like so. I'm going to let this render through and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay guys, so that's the effect that we've done. If you want to, too, sort of a new trend is you can add uh, a Milky Way galaxy or star look to the clip as well to go underneath. So if we replace the Milky Way here from the time lapse, we get rid of the time lapse. We can stretch this out. Now we get a shot that looks like this. By adding a little bit of motion to it, we can keyframe the scale by adding a keyframe there. And then if we jump to the end, we can add a keyframe of about 5%. And let's do about 10%. We can keyframe some rotation and add some rotation of about negative five degrees as well. So let that render through. Now we should get a little bit of rotation and movement in the sky, which is pretty cool as well. And you can add a transition transition in there if you please. So now we have a nice subtle rotation and movement, which looks pretty cool. So that's how you guys do the sky replacement in Premiere Pro. If you guys like these Premiere Pro tutorials, let me know and I'll keep doing more of them. But if not, then I'll stick with the Final Cut. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.